historic Alloys Theater in Springfield, Missouri, it's the Mystery Hour! And here's your host, Mystery Jeff Holter! How are you guys doing tonight? I have a new blazer and it's like light colored and I don't know what it goes with, but I wore it. <laughs> hey, we have a great show for you guys tonight. Carmelita Jeter is here and her three Olympic medals, the fastest woman alive. We also have the music of the Prismatics. <laughs> and we have a tremendous title sponsor, Branson. Hey, guess what? Special treat tonight. It's time for Things I've Noticed. Delivering my Things I've Noticed cards is Hungarian pop star Bonk. That was really him. Let's do Things I've Noticed. These things I've noticed. These things I've noticed. Yeah. Yeah. These things I've noticed. Bonk. These things I've noticed. Bonk. Bonk. All right, here we go. Things I've noticed. I've noticed I can't figure out if I ate myself if I would get twice as big or just disappear. <laughs> I don't know. Think about it. <laughs> I've noticed that a food court is exactly like a basketball court, except for instead of quick-footed athletes, it's sedentary people who can't make up their damn minds. <laughs> damn. I've noticed that I don't think I like memes as much as I'm supposed to. <laughs> a lot of meme apologists out there tonight. <clears throat> I've noticed that tweets are digital messages in a bottle for people that subscribe to your beach. <laughs> uh, how about this one? I've noticed that I went back in time and asked my great grandpa if he was working in his passion. He hit me with his shovel and told me to go home and help support my family. <laughs> There's a lot in that one, okay. <laughs> And finally, I've noticed that credit card readers are just a trick by companies to get your credit card info. That's things I've noticed. <laughs> things I've noticed. Things I've noticed. <laughs> That's right. That's right, everybody. We're going to keep moving because now it's time for America's favorite game. What's in the sock? That's right, everybody. We are playing What's in the Sock. I have two contestants here. What's going to happen is there are going to be three rounds. I'm going to say on your mark, get set, go. They're going to pull their socks up and move all the way over here to the buzzer. The first person who hits the buzzer gets to guess what's in the sock. Now let me tell you, it's a meal. <laughs> and they can't see right now, but here's the clue. This is what's in the sock. All right, all right, what's your name? I'm Chris. And what's your name? Brian. Chris and Brian, your feet have to figure out what meal is in the sock. One, two, three, pull up those socks. <laughs> hurry, 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 hurry. 
Get on over here. Hurry. Hurry. <laughs> All right. What's in the sock? Scrambled eggs and syrup. Scrambled eggs and syrup. No, what's in the sock? I'm going to say pancakes with uh, cherries on top. Closest is the IHOP, Rudy Tootie, fresh and fruity with whipped cream. All right, good job. You win first round, Chris. Round two is coming up. <laughs> Just how smart are your feet? All right, everybody, it's time for round two. This one is lunch. Take a look at what it is. It's time to play What's in the Sock. One, two, three, pull up those socks. What could it be? Can your feet taste? No. They sure can't. Pull up those socks, boys. Bring them over here. All right. Chris, what's in the sock? It's fried chicken, Jeff. <laughs> it's not fried chicken. What's in the sock? Cheeseburger. Closer. It's a classic roast beef with cheddar sandwich with cheese sticks from Arby's. All right, head on back, boys. It's time for the final round. We're adults. We're all adults. This is what we're doing. Yeah, that's part of his foot flesh that came off. <laughs> all right. There we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the final round. Let's see what's for dinner. Oh, okay. This one's worth five points. It's the tiebreaker. Here we go. One, two, three. Pull up those socks. Oh. Feet plus food. Ooh, ooh. Oh. oh, it's so juicy. All right, come on over. <laughs> It's not roast beef. Uh, it's not chicken. Man. Three, two. Meatloaf. I'm gonna say it's roast beef, beef with gravy. Because you said gravy. <laughs> Chris, you win. That was Springfield cashew chicken. You win. What's in the sock? That's how we do it. We'll be right back with Carmelita Jeter. That comedy bit brought to you by Bush Ramlow and Shore CPAs. Set design and construction brought to you by Elemoose, Digital Quill Studio, and Skinny Theatrical Design and Fabrication. Closed captioning for the Mystery Hour provided by Paragon Architecture. Big Whiskey's is the official American restaurant and bar of the Mystery Hour. Guest booking provided by Gig Salad. <clears throat> hey, welcome back. Welcome back, everybody. Let's just move on to our guest. We have a great guest tonight. We also have a great guest sponsor. Ha! The History Museum on the Square is like a garage sale, but nothing's for sale. <laughs> is that insulting? That's insulting. I'm sorry. Hey, we have a great guest tonight. She, at the 2012 London Olympics, won a gold medal, a silver medal, a bronze medal. She's the fastest woman alive. Please put your hands together for Carmelita Jetter. Hey. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm amazing. I think so. I think so. So, I don't know where to start with you. Um, were you fast when you were a kid? Yes, I was. I was, yeah. I was fast. Um, I grew up playing basketball, though. Yeah. So I was fast on the court, and then my high school basketball coach said, why don't you go out and run track? And look, yeah. look at me now. <laughs> you made it. <laughs> but. One thing I know about your story is that, like, you were, you, you've always kind of been the underdog, right? Like, yes. you didn't go to a big college, and, and you kind of, like, 
really got your elite speed a little later. Like, what, what was that like, kind of being the, the underdog? Was that motivating? Of course it's motivating. Um, you know, I went to a smaller Catholic school where the track program was really small. I never made it to state. I never went to Arcadia. I never went to all of these super big events that people feel like you have to make in order to make it. Yeah. I went to a Division II college, yeah. NCAA Athlete of the Year, CCAA Athlete of the Year. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Went to the Olympic trials in 2004, and you know, the rest is pretty much history. But you almost didn't make it there, right? Weren't you just like, I'm gonna get a job? Yes, <laughs> so <laughs> after not making it and just not getting the, you know, fairy tale story, mm -hmm. I said, okay, I need to do something. Um, so I decided to join the police department. Yeah. And yes. <laughs> And it was either the police department or the Navy. And yeah, yeah so you can tell I'm probably pretty structured, right? Right. <laughs> and so um, I'm sitting in front of three detective women and they tell me, you know, we can't hire you because when you talk about track and field, you light up and you glow. And I'm thinking to myself, hmm, okay, but I need benefits. Right, <laughs> right. right. <laughs> and so they told me to go back out, try it one more time, and if it, you know, doesn't work, then they'll put me in the academy. And yeah. 2007, I made my first team. Yeah. That's amazing. And, um, and now you have a couple of the fastest 100 meter dash times. Just a couple. <laughs> ever. Just a couple ever and ever. second fastest and three all time and no. <laughs> yes, that's amazing. So like, so then you kind of, I don't know if, you, if you'd say this, but you, you burst onto the scene, like you, yeah. you, start, you start getting really, really elite. Were there times where you had to just be like, I'm just interested as an Olympian, we, we, all of us have like arms and legs and all this stuff, but I can't do those things that you can do. <laughs> and like, and the, the, the dedication and like the mental strength it yes. takes. Definitely have to be willing to sacrifice it all mm -hmm. and put all your eggs in one basket. And you know, that's something that I stress to my girls now at Missouri State University is you have to be able to run through a wall and give it all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so take me then to 2012. Okay. You've done the Olympic trials, you've made the team and we're all watching at home. Yes. And we're like, particularly with sprints, it's like we all know there's been so much preparation and it comes down to you have to perform right now yeah. at your best. <laughs> the <do> pressure. You... <laughs> right, like the ultimate pressure. Right. Mm -hmm. What's your insight into that for those of us who haven't been in that sort of scenario? You know, I tell people that, you know, when I'm doing motivational speaking that everyone has their own Olympics. Mm -hmm. You know, for someone it might be graduating college or getting that big promotion or, you know, opening your own business and whatever that feeling was that was your highest peak yeah. is pretty much how you feel at the Olympics. Yeah. And um, it, you have 10 seconds to make it happen yeah. and it goes very, very fast. <laughs> and, um, you know, the number one thing I say is you just have to go off your instinct and you have to go off your heart. And when that gun clicks, you have to be willing to dive, cartwheel, swim, do mm. whatever you have to do to get to the finish line. And, and you have to be able to say, I left it on the track because you don't want the shoulda, coulda, wouldas and what yeah. if I woulda, and you, then you're chasing something for the rest of your life. Yeah. Um, you definitely want to leave it all out there. So take me into then, you're, you're in the Olympics. Yes. Take me into the, the, the four by one. You're yes. anchoring it <laughs> and like, it's like you're gonna have the fastest people if the exchanges aren't great, you're screwed, right? Well, you know, for a couple of Olympics, they've had faster women, the Americans. We've had yeah. faster women on the four by one team. And the number one thing I always preach is it's not about the fastest for women, it's about the chemistry. Whenever you're yeah. putting a team together, regardless if it's an Olympic team, maybe it's a work team, Everybody has to mesh well. Yeah, yeah. Everyone has to believe that the other person's gonna do their job and they're gonna pass the baton off and then when you get it, you're gonna do your job. Yeah. And when we were in London, Bianca Knight was not the fastest person. Yeah. She was the slower athlete of the group. Yeah. And we chose to put her on there because she had heart, she had drive, she had passion, and I knew she was gonna bring me the stick. Yeah. Um, when Tiana she Madison- She ran the third leg? She ran the third leg. When Tiana Madison, started the race, I said, oh, we won. 
Yeah. I knew instantly. Because you were watching. I, I'm, of course I'm watching, so I'm sweating and, I'm, yeah. and the nerves are going because I'm thinking, okay, now I can't mess it up. And, right. <laughs> and Allison Felix gets the stick. And for the first time, if you watch the relay, you see Allison with so much emotion. She's screaming at, Tiana, at um, Bianca Knight. And mm -hmm. then Bianca's bringing it to me. 16 steps, that's a crazy amount of steps that you give an elite athlete. Usually it's 22 and 23. Uh -huh. I gave her 16, because that's yeah. how fast I was ready to run. Yeah. And when I got the stick, everyone says, well, did you know you were breaking the world record? I said, I did. It was like I was running in the air. And when I pointed, everyone said, well, what did you point for? What did that mean? And sometimes, you know, you can't always say what you want to say. Yeah. So you have to do it in other ways. Yeah. And so many people were against us. So many people said we weren't going to do it. We we're going to drop the stick. And it was a little disappointing to yeah. hear a lot of, of, you know, naysay about us. So the point said a lot. Yeah. It said, yeah. take that. You know where to go and how to get there. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you, um, did you point before you crossed the finish line? I did. Line? Yeah. <laughs> You're like, I'm doing it. I'm there. This it is. is. Look, it at, right look at it. Well, I, 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 I'm safe to say having you on was our Olympic moment. Oh. Thanks for coming on. Come on, and Jenner. We'll be right back. Travel and accommodations provided by Hotel Vanderport. Systematic Savings Bank, official bank of the mystery hour. The Mystery Hour is brought to you in part by Ozarks Technical Community College. You have a dream, we have a plan. Tonight's musical guest brought to you by Bear Village. Welcome back, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the prismatics.
Very much strange, right? Hey! <laughs> we did it! That was the show! The Prismatics, Carver Lee, and Jenner. Just so you know, 10% of our box office proceeds go to the Glendale Cross Country team and